so I wanted to do a uh, little follow-up video on all the driveline updates, let you know how the project turned out, what the results were, and uh, and just give you my thoughts about, uh, about the whole process. So all in all, the project went very, very well. Uh, the results uh, I could not be happier with. Um, it was a very fun, it was a very fun project and uh, learned a lot. So let's talk about a little bit about the specifics of the uh, of the parts and, uh, and how everything turned out. So starting with the master cylinder. All right. So the master cylinder, uh, I know that the stock one, a lot of people have problems with, um, and the new one. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. It is. Uh, it's fully adjustable. That I. I really like that. Uh, it's got the metal eye hook instead of the uh, the plastic one, which is uh, also a big benefit. And just overall, it uh, it feels uh, much more solid. Um, so when I first installed it, I moved the eye hook all the way back, so the clutch pedal was all the way in its uh, final upright position and that uh, was a little bit higher than the stock one was and then I adjusted the eye hook accordingly and it felt a lot heavier I would say about 10-15% heavier uh, than it used to be um, but I felt like it was it was just too much travel and it didn't really need that much uh, in terms of of, uh, of the clutch uh, movement so uh, I ended up uh, moving the pedal down a little bit and then adjusting it accordingly so I moved the pedal down to uh, to, to level with the brake, which is about where the stock one was, and it felt a lot lighter, actually. So that's a good way to adjust uh, adjust the uh, the pressure, the the feel of the pedal, is just to adjust the uh, adjust how far the far back the pedal is. And I think that has a little bit to do with the uh, with the you know the angle in which the pedal uh, pushes on the master cylinder. Um, but overall, it feels great. Uh, it feels great. It feels solid. Uh, it's a lot bigger than the stock one, and so it has a lot of uh, a lot of potential for for being a lot better on on the track. Let's say um, the other big thing um, is the steel line that uh, that connects to it. So it's obviously better than the rubber line. It doesn't expand. It's uh, it's much more solid and is capable of a lot more uh, heat and a lot better. Uh, a lot better uh, performance on the track. Uh, the slave cylinder, uh, not much to say about that. It's pretty much just a stock replacement. Um, the only thing I'll say is that for the installation, after after I measured the distance from the throw out bearing to the edge of the uh, transmission to the bell housing and the clutch teeth, I did have to add one shim. Um, so that was, uh, that was something I did have to add, um, which, uh, you know, so if you are doing this project, Get yourself a set of shims. You know, if you don't need them, you can probably return them. But uh, it's better to have them because um, you don't know ahead of time uh, whether or not uh, you'll need them. So, yeah. Um, so overall, uh, that's really good. And the uh, the last sort of piece to the puzzle is the uh, the remote bleeder. So the remote bleeder really makes bleeding the clutch just stupidly easy. It's right in the engine bay, right next to the, the, the clutch reservoir. So literally all you have to do is just crack it open, have a friend, you know, pump the pedal, and uh, you can bleed your system without having to crawl under the car and reach up and use the force to, to you know, figure out where, uh, where all of that is going. So uh, overall a very, a very solid, uh, a very solid, uh, upgrade there so if that if you are going to do that get the remote bleeder it's like 30 bucks and it'll it'll change your life when it comes to bleeding then you can bleed the fluid more often uh you can you can get the air bubbles out uh, a lot more easily than you would um you know otherwise so yeah so good stuff with that uh, moving on uh the clutch itself um it's good it's good i mean it's, it's a kevlar clutch uh so uh, it's holding the power really well. Um, I've had no issues with with any kind of slippage or anything. Um, it feels good. It doesn't feel overly um, uh, strenuous to, to do any kind of launches or anything like that. Um, the 
the only thing I will say is there is a little bit of a chatter, I think it's called, where, let's see if I could uh, do an example. So, you know, if I'm like pulling into a parking spot and I'm just slowly releasing the clutch, you that kind of da 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 da, -da. But uh, overall, not too big a deal. I mean, if you just give it a little more gas or, or let the clutch out a little more, um, it will, that, that problem goes away. So I think it's just, it might have to do with the fact that, you know, I'm still breaking it in and uh, it's not necessarily, um, you know, fully, uh, fully, you know, married to the, uh, the pressure plate and what have you. But uh, yeah, overall, it's, uh, it's pretty good. That's a very minor, minor thing. And as far as was it worth upgrading? I mean, my old clutch was completely destroyed. The uh, the uh, the flywheel and the pressure plate had so many hot spots. It was it was ridiculous. So it was. Uh, I think it was a very worthwhile worthwhile upgrade to do. Um, you know, again, seventy five thousand miles. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a good good upgrade. Uh, yeah. So that's pretty much the transmission. Uh, the last part of it was the. Uh, the shifter again I made I already made a couple of videos about it perfect <laughs> I mean honestly like it is it is so good the way it's designed I think the design is absolutely superior to all other ones that I've seen on the market because what it does is the forward and back motion is shorter by about 40% but the side to side motion is remains stock it remains one to one uh, stock, which is good because then you get the distinct channels of one, two, three, four, you know, five, six. That uh, you know, so you don't miss shift, which I think is is what you want, right? You want sort of longer travel side to side, so you you have those distinct gears, but also have a much shorter throw when you're shifting. So very good upgrade. Can't say good enough things about it. If, if that's the one thing you change, uh, you know, I think it's it's well worth it. Uh, so moving back, drive shaft. Oh my goodness, what a difference the drive shaft has made. So the stock drive shaft has two rubber dampers on either end of the of the uh, drive shaft. One near the transmission, and then one uh, near the diff. And so when you give it power, you had this sort of you know, sort of delayed slingshot effect where you just sort of, you know, put the power down, you feel everything moving around, and then finally it gets to the wheels. So this eliminates all that. It's just a solid piece of metal that goes straight from the transmission to the diff, and oh my goodness, like it is the difference between like a laggy turbo car and naturally aspirated. I mean, it, it is like that significant of a difference. I mean, just the way it feels, putting the power down, just hitting it, you know, shifting gears, you know, going from zero to 60, all of that is just immediate, directly to the wheels. I absolutely love it. That's one of the, the best upgrades you can make to the driveline is just the the uh, the drive shaft. It is just so good for for what it does and, and what it is. I mean, and it's lighter. You can even get a carbon fiber one if you want to spend over a thousand bucks. And yeah, it's 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 a fantastic upgrade. It is great for for uh, for power delivery. I love it. Couldn't be happier. Shout out to uh, Andrew Collar for uh, having his warehouse or whatever with all of these things in stock and, and being able to ship. Uh, within a moment's notice, so huge props, uh, Andrew. Thank you for, for for that and for for all your help. Um, yeah. So moving back, uh, the next thing is the is the uh, the axles. So the axles do what they're supposed to do. Um, they prevent the wheel hop. So as I launch, you know, typically the wheels would chirp and it would kind of you know have wheel hop. It's a common problem among these among these cars. And the technology of having asymmetric, uh, you know, diameters that 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 cancel out the resonance, it's perfect. Um, it, it does what it's supposed to do. It feels so much more planted. Launching, you know, th there's no more chirps. Like it, it fully puts down the power. You feel it. You absolutely feel it. And the back end just feels so much more planted to the ground. It is an absolute 
uh, it's a great upgrade. It's a great upgrade. As far as installation goes, um, yeah, just, uh, you know, 24 bolts. Uh, the only advice I can give is, is do the, when you're taking it off, do the wheels first, then the diff. Uh, I had it where I took it off the diff first and then I had a lot of trouble with the wheel. I had to like hold the, the uh, you know, the, the wheel, the, the brake uh, rotor to, to, <laughs> to hold it from keeping it spinning so I can remove it. So do the wheels first, then the diff and installing it, diff first, then the wheels, obviously. Um, yeah, in terms of, uh, of that, it's, it's, it's a fantastic upgrade. It's an expensive upgrade. But it does what it says it'll do, and that's uh, that's what you want. That's what you want. Um, so finally, I want to talk about the rear cradle bushings and and all the the bushing upgrades. So this one's a bit of a controversial one. So there's a lot of mixed feelings about it online. Um, all the videos that I've seen um, from you know Josh's Car Corner and uh, Hook uh, Three or Nine Nine Three Seven, I think it is. Um, you know drop the cradle and they use the rear cradle alignment tool to be able to align the cradle in inside the, the frame of the car so you don't get any sort of um, you know misalignments um, and I did my due diligence right I tried to find the tool um, the only place I found it was like on, on uh, Maverick Man Carbon's website and he had like a replica and it took like six weeks to manufacture so that's one of those things that's uh you know I didn't want to wait six weeks so and I couldn't find anyone anyone willing to sell it used um uh I called local dealerships Chevy dealerships uh GMC obviously Pontiac doesn't exist anymore so I called around nobody had the tool I called some specialty alignment shops uh none of them uh obviously had the tool and one of the guys said look I've done this kind of stuff for years you don't need the tool he said don't believe everything you see online you don't need the tool um, and I had I heard a lot of other people say if you're doing poly bushings they don't have a lot of you know uh, a lot of uh, adjustments so putting it in is pretty much perfect so I went for it I mean worst case I just you know get the tool wait a few weeks and, and, and realign it um, yeah, so after I got all the bushings in, um, so the stock bushings, the big ones that, that the cradle actually sits in, those are kind of cone shaped, right? So the top is a little narrow and it kind of spreads out, kind of like a, like those old Soviet you know, rockets. It kind of spreads out this way. And the bolt has a lot of adjustment on, on, how, it can, on how it can mount to the, the frame. Whereas the, uh, the poly ones are just a little cylinder where the bolt you know, just barely fits through. And so with that, you know, as I was installing it, there wasn't a lot of play in either direction to, uh, to mount the thing. So realistically, you know, to misalign it by inches is, is absolutely ridiculous. There is no way to do that with the poly bushings. Like they are, I mean, you have to really try to just get the, the bolt to even go in. So as far as I'm concerned, it's aligned as good as it's ever going to be. And the main thing about that is, you know, I didn't, I, you know, I took my, my ruler, my micrometer, and I, you know, did some spot measurements between like, you know, mounting holes and things like that. And everything seemed pretty much aligned, like within half a millimeter of, of where everything should be. And, you know, as far as I'm concerned, like visually put the tires on, everything looked straight and aligned. I took it to the alignment shop. It was pretty much spot on when I brought it in and then they adjusted the toe a little bit and the thrust is absolutely straight. The wheels are perfectly aligned, tying like 0.1 degree toe in just for, you know, just for, uh, you know, better, better, uh, you know, centering action. But beyond that, it's absolutely perfect, the alignment. And so I really don't see any sort of like, you know any way that I could align it any better I mean again you know this is my opinion this is my experience you know if if you have other opinions then you know it's a free country but I just feel like there is very little possibility and opportunity to make that rear cradle misaligned with poly bushings um, so I didn't need the tool I managed to put it on and it's pretty much damn near perfect and 
as far as I'm concerned, you don't need the tool. Now, I could be wrong. If you have this tool, by all means, use it. And if you think I'm an absolute fool, send me the tool. I will be glad to, to check my work and to realign everything and bow to your superiority. But as far as I know, the tool is not necessary. For, for poly bushings with, with the setup that I did, it, it's just, it's not necessary. And again, I, I, I get it. I get the tool exists for a reason. I get that General Motors official documentation says you need to use this tool when, when putting in the cradle. But like I said, I don't know how it could be any better. The rear end feels so much better than it used to be. It's so planted, it drives perfectly straight. There is no issues whatsoever with the way it's currently aligned. So, like I said, as far as I'm concerned, it's pretty much perfect. Um, but that's my opinion. I'm just a guy, I'm not a mechanic, I'm not a professional. You know, I'm just, this is a hobby of mine, but like I said, I was able to do it without without any, any issues. So, yeah, so that's my experience uh, with that. So overall, you know, was this project worth doing? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, I I feel like I have changed this car's character for the better in almost every way. And it just, it feels great. It feels so much more planted. It handles better. It delivers the power so much. You know, a lot of people spend so much effort getting the engine as powerful as they possibly can. And then, you know, they just have, you know, stock suspension. Like that will, you'll just burn out the power and have nothing to show for it, but a really loud and obnoxious engine. Whereas with the suspension upgrades and, and the bushings and the axles and the drive shaft, that's what you need to put the power down and to give it enough, you know, enough of a, of a base to, to, to push the power to the pavement. Because otherwise, you know, you're just gonna spin out. Like that, that's, that's the bottom line. So if you are gonna upgrade, you know, do the suspension first because it will change your your entire perspective on on how these cars can act and, and how much they have in terms of you know potential. And and I think that that's really cool. Um, yeah. So that's my opinion. And uh, overall, it's a fantastic upgrade. I really enjoyed it. I learned a lot about how the car functions, how everything works. A lot of blood, sweat, and tears, but realistically, it was a lot of fun. I had a great time, and uh, you can do it. <laughs> it's uh, it's definitely a doable project. So, yeah, so that's, uh, that's what it is. So, time for some uh, Turn signal, man.